Welcome to More Than a Mission, a podcast where we explore what it looks like to discern God's calling to live an active, intentional life of sharing the gospel. Each week, we talk about the way God is moving in our lives, around the world, and everywhere in between, as well as how God's call to missions may apply to your life. Ready to explore your calling? Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the More Than a Mission podcast. My name is Micah Torgerson, and I'm joined, as always, by our other host, Zaya Henderson. Hey, guys. And Andrew Carlberg. How's it going, guys? We have a special guest today, another fellow World Race Squad member, Stephanie Hardy. Stephanie, thanks for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, Stephanie, before we jump into everything World Race, we want to know more about you. Um, so tell us all the good stuff, like where you're from, you know, where you're at in life, college, past college, all that good stuff. Okay. So I am originally from Newport News, Virginia. I lived there. I don't know if it's most of my life anymore. <laughs> it was a lot of my life. I moved in um, eighth grade after eighth grade, and then I moved to Durham, North Carolina, and now. Uh, my parents and I currently live in Kittrell, North Carolina for the past year, but the past four years, I've been in school at Franklin Springs, Georgia. <clears throat> it's Emanuel College. It's pretty small. It's in North Georgia. It's like not even an hour after you get out of South Carolina. I got my degree in organizational communication and I played volleyball there <clears throat> all four years. And yeah. That is what I've been doing. I'm, and now I'm coaching volleyball. Perfect. So organizational communication. Why did you choose that? It's such <laughs> an interesting sounding major. Yeah. So I actually went to college not for that. I originally, <clears throat> my freshman year, I was a digital media production major because in high school, I really fell in love with photography, but it was more film photography, which is cool but like as far as actually using that in the real world nowadays <clears throat> isn't really a thing so i just kind of love more of the art of it and as far as like going to school for that i was like eh, this will be more of like a fun little side thing not my career <laughs> and so my freshman year i remember talking to my advisor like okay so i really like people i love giving presentations that's my favorite part about school i love like talking and learning about people she's like okay so there's this major called organization communication where you just learn about people, learning how to facilitate people. And uh, I think it'd be really good for you. And I was like, okay, cool. So I had classes like intercultural communication, interpersonal communication, gender communication, just like learning about how different people are, but how similar they can be as well. And just like, I love it. I think it's really important. People always make fun of communication majors because like, cool, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> but like, you can do literally anything because you're always with people. And I just, I just love it. I didn't really have like a career in mind when I went in. I was like, I want to learn more about this. So let's do that. <laughs> All right. So the impossible question then, what's like the dream job? <laughs> the dream job. <laughs> well, you see, I don't really know exactly. I mean, right now, because also I'm about to run the world race and my whole life's about to change. So my answer will probably be different <laughs> when I'm actually getting a job. But um, right now, like I would still, I would love to be a personal trainer which people are like, why don't you get a kinesiology degree? Good question. <laughs> but, um, but again, just like the value of training people, like a personal trainer, you have to learn how to motivate each person. Cause some people exercise is a really vulnerable thing. Or some people it's like, Hey, like scream on my face, yell at me, throw weight at me. Not actually throw weight at people, but you know, like just learning like the different types of people and how to meet them there. Because like, I do love fitness. I think it's really important as far as just like, connecting with people in that. So that would currently be my dream job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's really cool. I mean, everything that you've talked about, um, your major, just, it honestly reminds me a lot of like, what we're gonna do on the world race and mission work in general and like meeting people where they're at rather than, you know, sticking to this plan that, that you have laid out and expecting people to be able to work with that, um, but rather being able to be flexible and understand where people are coming from and and help each person in the different way that they might need that so i think that's really cool i'm 
hopefully this degree has prepared you well for the world race. <laughs> yeah, I think because like we had to do a capstone thing at like the end of my degree, which was in the spring. And at that point, well, towards the second half of doing that, like I knew I was going on the race. And so you have to do like your career and how you're going to connect to like your major and Jesus and all these things. And I was like, it was really cool how I was like, oh, like this actually does make sense. Like, because a lot of times it's like, okay, you're not using your degree, you're going on this mission trip. It's like, actually, I kind of am. <laughs> and so just like being able to connect the two, like, okay, I actually have been learning for a reason and it's cool to see how that'll play out. Yeah. I can tell you I won't be using my degree on the race with <laughs> pretty intense confidence. Hey, so okay. we're looking for actuaries elsewhere, but you know. You never know, Andrew. <laughs> we might need someone to analyze some risk for us. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stephanie, to the, the nuts and bolts of this then. So, you talked about, so you just graduated <laughs> in May? Question yes, marks. well. Does it count as graduating if you didn't have a graduation? <laughs> I finished my degree in May. <laughs> okay, and so then why World Race? How did you end up there? Why now? All that fun stuff. Okay, um, so it, the process with the World Race started about like eight years ago. My older sister, Becca Hardy, she, start, she went on the World Race a long time ago, and I'm the youngest of four girls. And all my older sisters are incredible, which is great. But being the youngest, everyone's always like, oh, you're following this one's footsteps. You're following in this one's footsteps. And I'm like, no, I'm different. I, it's my own footsteps. Even though I'm like, okay, but like I really do like the things that they do. <laughs> but my pride is like, okay, maybe I'll just find like a, the same thing, but different. <laughs> so for the longest time, like my heart was kind of being stirred for like the nations at that time and people and stuff. But I was still kind of like, hmm, like, I still had volleyball. I still wanted to do that. So I'm like, that still is going to be something just like maybe down the road, like maybe a dream. Like, it's really awesome. I love the idea of it, but it was just like, I was just, I knew volleyball was still in it for me. And so then I went to college for that. I, cause that was, it, yeah, cause I think it was, it was in high school and Becca went and then it was incredible. She's still there. She like she still loves it obviously <laughs> she doesn't left and so and she's a very persuasive person but she and so she would all she'd been trying to get me to do it for the longest time and uh, it was still I was like okay maybe like maybe later like maybe later like maybe someday and then um going into my senior year this past year for volleyball there was already just like a lot of weight on just everything so I'm like okay like yes I have another year but it's like the real world is very close my volleyball career is very close to being done and I was just like okay like I need to start probably thinking about what I'm gonna do after this like volleyball is cool but also I need to be a grown-up but I felt like she was just like hey like just lock into volleyball like just you'll we'll, fi we'll figure it out but just right now like you really can like just give your mind to volleyball like you're allowed to like focus on that like continue that like journey with me because it was a very emotional journey and just a lot of things. And it was like really beautiful. And then like right after and Christmas, I'm like, okay, so what are we going to do? <laughs> um, and so uh, I was still like, this was also before the world lost its mind, but um, <laughs> so I was still like trying to decide. And at that time I was thinking about like, okay, the world race, but also I recently an ad on Instagram, they get me with those, but, um, <laughs> but it was like, the ad one time was like fitness and missions and I was like what <laughs> and it was like a YWAM thing and so I'd actually been talking to someone about doing that after I graduated in Australia about like it was just like a fitness thing so I've been talking to them like I still kind of like knew the world race but I was like that's like really intense that's like all in because like YWAM is kind of like you learn and then you go and that's like go which is cool <laughs> but um and then also at the same time I was getting um various opportunities to play volleyball internationally and I was like okay I mean I thought that was over but that'd be kind of cool if it wasn't and so with that it was all kind of in the same week when it was like I had I was going to the world race open house and uh, I don't know if you guys did any of that if you were there I wanted to yeah, okay cool um <laughs> so I went to world race open house and I also had a call with the recruiter from Italy about that and it was also my school's send week which it's like missional focused, all this stuff. And so I was like, like I knew the weight of that week and I was just like, okay, like 
it was really like Jesus like let me listen to you like because also we talked about and you guys have mentioned in the podcast about deciding the route like a lot of times like you can't just like choose like they're all good options what, what do you want to do and that's worse for me <laughs> but um and so I was just like okay like I just really want to like listen to you Jesus and he was just like okay like the right one will feel like home and I was like okay cool at the time I really loved this song coming home by house fire so I was like okay like that song's probably gonna play over the radio somewhere and I'll know it's the right thing <laughs> and um so I like had the meetings it was like a really great time and just different stuff at the send week was when I first um I was late to one of the worship house nights because I do that um <laughs> so I but like sometimes it works out really well the timing is Jesus not me um <laughs> I mean okay not Jesus making me late I'm my own self that makes me late anyways um but I came in late and so they were already like praying and one of the leaders um because again I guess back to that coming home song talks about the prodigal side and I like I love that story because it's just so beautiful the love of the father and that whole week was talking about okay like your story will determine your purpose and I'm like okay, my story is kind of cool, but it's, like, a lot of people, like, they were talking to people, of like, like, a friend of mine who was, like, adopted, and, like, you can help adopted kids, and it's just, like, stuff where, like, okay, yes, that makes sense, but, like, for me, I'm, like, mm, what do you mean, and so I walked in, and he was um, talking about, like, the prodigal son, and a lot of times, like, I've heard that so many times, and it's a beautiful story still, but it's, like, I was, like, okay, like, okay, Jesus, like, this is beautiful, like, you're speaking to me, and then it was, like, so in the same way we receive that love from the Father, let us then turn around and give that love. And I was just like, I like started crying. I was like, wait, like, I can do that? Like, that's how I get to use this? Like, I, like, because, like, yeah, like, your love is great, Jesus. Like, I know it. I have been, like, so undeserving of your grace. And it's like, I, I like, I get to be a part of that. <laughs> and um, it was just, like, super cool. And then... I still had my call with the Italy stuff, which sounded really cool. And then I um, went to the open house and it was just like, because I've been to the Adventure Editions base so many times just with Becca, like anytime I visit her, they have like their Monday morning worship. Like I was pretty like used to it. And so I was just sitting there and I was just like, oh, this does feel like, this feels like home. Like this makes sense. Like for someone who's, to her people who's like, okay, the world race doesn't make sense. I was like, yeah, this definitely makes sense. Like this is what I'm going to do next. Like I like, because for so many years, which again, I love volleyball. It's been giving me great opportunities. It's always like groups I was in, we were unified for that sport. And then like, we still had Emmanuel on our backs. So we still were unified for Jesus. But at the end of the day, our common goal was to win volleyball games. And so it was like, like this new team is kind of like our common goal is just Jesus. Like I've never had it where it's just like, it's always something with Jesus is like kind of together. And she's like, Oh, this is just all Jesus. We're all unified just for this Jesus thing. And it's, really cool and so that is how I'm here <laughs> that's awesome even just like you know, just the beauty of your like willingness and desire to like sit and listen and then how immediately like well maybe not immediately maybe more of a longer term thing than you thought it might be <laughs> but like the Lord like answered that and showed up and like just your willingness to like, like actually listen and step into it I think is super beautiful and mm -hmm. the whole like fitness thing you know who knows maybe they'll need an actuary on the race maybe they need a fitness person on the race yeah <laughs> um but I think I mean something for me that I think I really learned in like wrestling through like my decision was like those dreams for the future I think a big one for me is like the chance to like pastor and like lead in that kind of way here at some point in life like just because you say yes to something now doesn't like end that forever right and like how the Lord can easily like use that still later on in life and like mm -hmm often what he's looking for is just our simple obedience like in the current season and so i think it's super beautiful to see the way you listened and then like your obedience now in this current season i think the question that i would have for you we actually just talked about this yesterday these podcasts will probably be not posted day by day but a few weeks back we talked about just like what we chose in our decision of like we had the chance to either still leave in october delay till january or delay till august like why did you choose to, well, I, can, I won't spoil it, but what did you choose and why? <laughs> what did I choose? <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> yeah, that was kind of crazy because for a while, because right after I committed to the races, when kind of the, the world 
ended. I mean, it didn't end it. There's still a lot of hope, but you know. Um, and so I was having to, I was in this new community, which is like incredible, but it, incredible, but it's like so intentional because some of you guys have been in there for so long. So you guys were like pouring out your hearts in these like chats. And I was just like, I don't have the mental capacity to like be a part of this community right now. Like I miss my friends from college. <laughs> like I still need to like mourn. Like I wasn't ready to like transition from college to the race yet. So I kind of like kept my distance and just like the vulnerability because you guys are like really real. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm good. Cool. <laughs> but, um, and so like, I kind of kept my distance from the group. And then after like, I kind of got, through college and like the transition of how that all ended and stuff I like kind of was like okay like I'll join some more zoom calls I'll like talk to more people like this is my group like I'm ready like let's dive in and then it was like right after and then I find and you guys were meeting up so much I was like I don't I don't have the time for that or the schedule but super cool <laughs> and then I finally like could and I um just cause like the, for when we like went to the lake, I was literally not going that week, <laughs> but then I had canceled my work schedule cause I had a volleyball event happening. And so then the volleyball got canceled and then my work schedule was already, it was like literally moments after. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like maybe I'll just get my work schedule back to energy. So like, no, 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 we're going to go to the lake. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll like be friends with these people. Not cause I didn't like you guys. It was just like a lot. And so, um, and so like I went to the lake and it was just like in, an incredible time. Like there was so much healing and I was just like, just that happened and so much like unity and so much just like, this is awesome. Like we're going to do this around the world for a year. Like, let's go. And then, then I finally like stepped in. I'm like, okay, like I'll step in. I'll love these people. I'll let them see me. And then um, we got that email and I was like, what? <laughs> like, why, like, why did I have to go to the lake? Why did I have to care about these people to have my heart broken again? I was like, you told me to love them and now I am hurt. <laughs> and so just like, I was like kind of, and I was just kind of like angry because I was like, I'm so over this year. Just like, I love change for a while. And then recently I've learned, I love change that I can control, not change that I can't control, which is a whole nother thing. But, um, <laughs> but I was just like, okay like I was a hot I like didn't expect the heaviness of it because like I was like literally if I would have got this email a week ago I would have thought about it because I decisions are kind of tough so I would have had to like process the decision but it's like my heart wouldn't be involved <laughs> why do we have to deal with that <laughs> but um and so and because I felt like immediately the draw just because of this whole year how it's been going just with like just this year, just the, how America has been struggling with COVID with a lot of racial injustice. Like my heart's been really angry at America, but also really stirred for it. And my heart has been breaking for it. And part of me has kind of been almost like, can I leave my home in this state to go to these other nations? Like I was already dealing with that before. Like I even knew that was an option. I was like, okay, no, but like, I know I'm called to this, but it's like, Jesus, like I just, we got to do something here and then when the option was to and because yeah and just like the option to stay in America for a little bit uh and then go international I was like oh that seems like a good a good option <laughs> but then a lot of the people I'd connected with at the lake were like so convinced of January and I was just like wait <laughs> like Jesus you're talking to both of us why can't you call us to the same things like Cause I'm like, I trust like, like you guys' heart and like other people I was talking to, like your heart and like listening and like Jesus, like really is calling me to international. And like, I know like January is for me. And I was just like, yeah, like I trust you, but I'm also like, wait, but like, that's not what Jesus is saying to me. <laughs> like my heart is for like here and now. And like just so much with like October, cause that's when my birthday is. So that was like the original thing of like where Jesus started stirring of like, hey, this isn't just Becca's thing. Like, this is for you too. Like, you can come on this as well. And um, it's like, I knew the whole time. And then just after talking to, um, I like wrote poetry about it because that's always helps you process it. And like, I didn't even know my answer. And then later, like I read the poem and I was like, oh, <laughs> I already knew what I was doing. <laughs> but, um, and then like talking to, I was talking to a lot of people who kept saying like, you, you're allowed to just choose. And I'm like, okay, yeah, but like, I was like, can someone just tell me what to do? And so like, I was talking to my sister, Becca, 
and uh, she was like like weighing it out I'm like okay but like I know I went to the lake to meet these people like maybe that is like that part of my heart is what I'm supposed to like step into like for this community because that is so important that's such a big part of the race but like I also really like this October option she's like okay like if take all of these factors out which one do you want to do I'm like October and I was like oh I was like, okay, so October, <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, that is how, and uh, yeah, I'm happy about it, it was really difficult, and like, it's like weird in retrospect, I was like, it's hard to like remember all the exact feelings of it, but it was like, it was so heavy, <laughs> but yeah, that is how. <laughs> I think, for one, Stephanie, um, People like you made it really hard on me when I was making my decision, um, mostly because, you know, with everything going around, going on here in America the last like six months or so, it does like make my heart hurt for our country. Um, and there was so much of me that like absolutely heard everything that you were saying and like the other people that I was talking to that chose to stick with the October route and like, yeah. America needs missions like just as much as as international countries do um and like it was it was like I almost got to the point where I was like okay I just need to go like this is God calling me to the world race and like if this is what it looks like now then I just need to go but then like I I always remembered what um we were told like in our interview process and like right after we were accepted is like to write that why, that why blog on like why you're doing the world race. And so, and because you're going to have to go back to that. And I was like, y'all are crazy. I'm just going to write this and say, Hey, I'm going on this, this mission trip. Um, and I'm never going to come back to it. But like, lo and behold, sure enough, I had to go back to it. And while I was making that decision, but I think it's really, really, really cool how um, people like you are just sticking with like, God's call to go, no matter like what that looks like, no matter where it is, uh, you're just going to be faithful in that and go. So I, I really commend you for sticking with your heart on that one. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So Stephanie, what is something that you're like really excited for about the race? And what is something that you're like nervous about? Okay. Um, I'll do, which one do you want? I'll do nervous first and then we'll get to like happy things. I mean, that's lots of happy too. But um, so I'm really nervous about, which is also why for the longest time I was like, the world race is not for me. I don't have that kind of heart capacity to like say goodbye 11 times. And just because like that's like terrifying to me. I'm just like, I, cause I get so invested, like I can love very deeply. And part of me is like scared for that heartbreak that's already happened, <laughs> but it's the, uh, cause like, I remember like with this thing, I was like, dude, it's like, I knew this was going to happen. Like I thought I had more time, but, um, so I'm like, I'm nervous about that. And also with that, I'm nervous that I'll like distance myself from like really diving into like ministry opportunities or like even my team just be out of fear of like heartbreak. And so like those two kind of together, I'm nervous about that and because there's a girl on our squad who she was a squad who got sent home and she was actually talking about that of um our marco polos but i was like super behind so it was like days before i was actually listening to it but um she was talking about like yeah like that's gonna be a thing and i was like okay this is great like she's gonna tell us how to like fix that and she's like but i think it's good that your heart breaks i'm like bro like <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> she's like like it's important to like feel that and like to, to love and like because of that like love like that's part of loving people and it's just like okay hey, you're right and I was like even talking to my sister last night like I don't even think I should bring mascara on the race like I'm just gonna be like off my face the whole time <laughs> but um so I'm ex so, like I'm nervous about that but excited to like learn through that but what I'm really excited about is just like seeing <laughs> it's like seeing Jesus through um, different cultures <laughs> and um, just because like for the longest time like I've traveled all along the east coast more because like you guys go into the the west I'm not very good at that so um, so like I've seen Jesus like a lot of Bible Belt Jesus a lot of this types of Jesus which there's a lot of truth in that but I'm also excited to like 
with each new culture I encounter to encounter like a different aspect of God because God's a lot bigger than like the small version that we know now and so just like with each new culture like I'm excited to learn about new culture and just like see new faces but also just like seeing the face of Jesus in a new light in each different space yeah yeah I think that's super beautiful I think that's definitely something I think every single person here had on here has talked about just like saying goodbye is gonna suck <laughs> and like but like even in that you were mentioning like it literally is impossible to love without being hurt and so like as hard as it is and as much as it's gonna suck and as much as we're gonna like want to withdraw just like the constant choice that we're gonna have to like invest fully not knowing if we'll ever see the people again but just like I've just seen so many times in my life the beauty of something that I thought was going to have like, hmm, there's two sides to this, things that I have thought were going to have like huge impact that were long term and like nothing. But then like, like literally a couple hours with somebody like leading to a like massive life change, something I had nothing to do with. And so like, even to view, maybe we have a month that seems like maybe insignificant, just the reality of like what the Lord can do and we choose to simply like fully invest and press in in that month and like the ridiculous life change so honestly there's probably a lot of fruit that will come that like we will never get to see there will be fruit hopefully that we get to see <laughs> but like mm -hmm. just the beauty of i've just seen so many times in my life the beauty of how the lord can use even just like small minutes like small moments that i view as insignificant and like how we get to step into that every day as painful as that might be uh the other thing i'll say is hey don't worry none of us are bringing mascara either so you're good on that. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's, I'm also very excited. Just like, I think for you, something that's really unique, we were talking to Zaya about this in one of the previous episodes, like the chance that y'all now have to like watch ministry here in the U.S. and then go international. And even just like the chance for it to like maybe give you a lens of like, say you do come back from the race and end up in America, just like a different way of looking at like life and what ministry could look like in the U S how it gives you like a preview of like what that could look like. If you actually just like do return here after the world race, mm -hmm. I think it's something that'll be really beautiful that like y'all didn't anticipate coming into the race, but now you're going to get to experience along with freezing cold winters in the North. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking about that, Stephanie, since we are on the same team, how do you feel about going to Chicago and Wisconsin for our first two places? I'm really excited because there are a lot of, because I've never been to either of those places. Chicago, right, like when they sent that email, that was one where I was like, oh, that'd be dope. Like on a very surface level thing, which might negate everything else I'm about to say, uh, the first day we actually get to Chicago is my birthday and it's my 23rd birthday. So it's my Jordan year in Chicago which is just dope on its own level, but that's beside the point. <laughs> so, uh, but, so I'm like really excited just about that little thing, but I'm just really, I don't know, Chicago just always seemed like a really cool place. And just like, I don't know, the heart of the city, at least like I've never been, but like the impression I get is just like a tough one, especially for Chicago and Wisconsin, just in recent events in our nation have, there have been somewhat of a hot spot and I'm and part of me I'm like yeah let's go like I don't want to go to like some like safe place like let's go like where it's like a mess mess like let's like bring the love of Jesus and like I'm just like really being a part of the movement that's already kind of happening there and just I'm really excited about that. <laughs> cool. I don't know like the cold weather is going to be very interesting I just want it to snow that's all I want. Yeah. Like, I don't even, like, I was so cold in Georgia winter. And, like, that is so, like, because I, like, again, I had to, like, look at a map again to, like, see where Wisconsin was. I was like, oh, my gosh. That is so north. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, it'll be fun. <laughs> Stephanie, two things. We were telling Zaya this um, on our episode where we explained our decisions. Number one, it's going to be November, December up here in while you'll be in Chicago and Wisconsin. There's a decent chance that y'all never get snow. Like <laughs> we were saying last year, 
at Christmas time, it was like in the 50s up here. Oh. So, <laughs> It's okay. not normal. I'm but saying possible. I'm saying that to prepare you for getting dumped on with snow. Because it ain't gonna happen two years in a row where you have warm weather. <laughs> um but the second thing that, that I'll tell you that I'm really excited about is to see the ministry that y'all get to do up here in Chicago and in Wisconsin because outside of like uh, my church in the Milwaukee area and like where I grew up um, and like a few other nonprofit organizations that I've been able to be involved in. Like I haven't been exposed to all that much ministry here in this area. So I'm really excited to see what you guys get to do and like to almost live vicariously through you guys and <laughs> to have that same, like that same door open, like Andrew was talking about where, you know, now we know of something else that's here in the states say we were to ever to come back here and feel a calling here yeah i've actually i was telling zaya I, <laughs> the like church y'all are partnering with in chicago for like six years growing up we partnered with them doing ministry so i actually like know the church that y'all are partnering with which is really cool uh but like what you were saying i think the thing that stood out to me and it's really just like beautiful to hear is like your desire to go where it's not safe. I think I was telling Micah and the people we were traveling with this past week, like I was just reading the story of Gideon and Judges six and seven. And like, there comes a point in that story where God calls Gideon after he's taken his army from like 32,000 down to 300 the night before they're gonna actually fight. He calls him to go into the opposing camp. And he literally says to him like, go into the camp. And if you're afraid, go into the camp that like, God's advice for our fear is to simply just like step into it. And I think the thing that I took from that and shared was, I just think even like going into world race, I think it's really easy to think that like long-term calling is where like I'm equipped, where I'm talented, where I like feel safe and like confident in what I'm doing. And I think there is some reality to like confidence, but like when you look biblically, there's not a single person that's called that was like, Oh yeah, I'm really equipped to do that. Like every single person is called to step through like dramatic fear and like the whole purpose being that it leaves them dependent. And so like, I think it's just really encouraging for me to hear your desire to go where it's not safe and to like go where you don't have control as scary as that might be. I think you make a really good point there, Andrew. And like, I know we've talked about this a lot when we've talked about the world race but like stepping into that uncomfortableness so it's really cool to see you living that out stephanie without even like having us say anything about it it's something that you've you've come to on your own which is super awesome because it's like weird because <clears throat> you always think especially growing up you're like okay like these people doing these crazy mission trips like they they got to a certain kind of level they know what they're doing but even like okay, I signed up for it. Like, I'm technically that person, but I'm like, okay, my team knows what they're doing. Like, it's hard to be like actually stepping into that. Cause it's like, like you, before, especially when I didn't fully know you guys, it'd be like just the things that you guys would say. And I'm just like, yeah, like that's like, just like a different depth that I wasn't used to. Or like someone would be like asking for a prayer and like the group me and I'd be like, okay, like I'd like, like it. And be like, yeah, I'm praying for you. And then someone right after you'd like write out this long prayer. I'm like, oh, like, that's cool. Like, I don't know, just like exposed to like this new, but again, kind of like, I don't know, just back to even learning in college about different people communicate and just learning that differences and different strengths is it anything against me and stepping into that. Cause that still is something that like each day I have to be like, okay, like not time for a pity party. Like we're doing this, like, come on, let's go. And just like, not, I don't know, not like disqualifying yourself, especially not when you're about to go do it. It's like, hey <laughs> you gotta stop talking to yourself like that and just like I don't know and just kind of learning how to step into that is such a big thing because it is even like when you're literally doing the thing it's like still so easy to be like okay everyone else around me knows what they're doing and it's, that's just part of like growing up too <laughs> like for the longest time I thought people my age really like knew life but I'm just like you see <laughs> I feel like the same level of like these high school girls I'm coaching. <laughs> like I still don't know anything. I don't know if any of us ever really know 
truly know what we're doing or where we're going in life. <laughs> at, least, like at what point? I'm not going to speak for Zay and Andrew, but I don't. <laughs> I, I think there's been a, points where, like, I thought I had it figured out, and yeah. then you, life just gets turned upside down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I feel like the I times say. where I really think I know what I'm doing is when I know the least. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe that's good that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, we're all in this together. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephanie, like uh, we've said, we're really excited to get to see how you and uh, your whole squad, both you and Zaya, um, get to do ministry both in the States and then hopefully we'll get to see you when we launch internationally in January. Yeah. Um, but last question for you. So, Two weeks from now, we'll be at training camp. Are you ready? I mean, no. <laughs> that's the thing of like, yes. And like, there's sometimes I'm like, okay, like, yeah, like I'm, I'm ready. But there's other times I'm like, no, <laughs> like, I'm so not ready. I'm like, it's, like, it's crazy. Cause this has been a thing that's like for the longest time, I was, it was like years in the process. It was always like, okay, that's a far away dream. Like that's so far away. It's like, is it two weeks? <laughs> and so, like, I, yeah, I think I'll have enough gear. I think I'll, I don't know. <laughs> yes or no. <laughs> hey, well, whether you're ready or not, we're going to be there in two weeks. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. we'll have to be ready. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It was super incredible to hear your story and to hear how you got involved with the world race. And we're super excited to be able to race with you, even though we technically, for Andrew and I, won't technically be on the same <laughs> squad anymore. Sad face. But I think something that we've said too is that, you know, our original October squad, like, we were all together for a reason and we all impacted each other's lives uh, up until our split, so to speak. <laughs> but um, y'all are friends forever. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's gonna do it for us this week. Um, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the More Than A Mission podcast. We'll catch y'all next week. We want to thank you for listening to More Than a Mission. For more information and to keep up with our ministries, follow us on social media at More Than a Mission Podcast or email us directly at more than a mission at outlook.com.